Here's the thing. In here, there really is a potential for a real rage mode. A real overclock rage mode. But AMD doesn't take advantage of it. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly the settings that I use to get very good performance above stock out of this card using the very information AMD provides you in the Radeon Adrenaline software. And I'm gonna show you the exact benchmarks of how I come to the determination. You can get even better performance just by simply copying the information they provided. I am the Graying Tech, a gaming insider. If you would like to learn how to improve your gaming performance, start now by clicking that subscribe button. Welcome back to Project Red Star and on the right hand side of me here is the 4K monitor, the LG 48 inch CX. And we have Hitman 3 running on that machine. We have the AMD Radeon Adrenaline software up. And here on the main screen, we are looking at a spreadsheet. We also have the CapFrameX tool started. We will need that to capture information. Starting off, we are going to need an Excel spreadsheet in order to properly document all the things that we are finding out about this system. That includes what the best settings for the GPU will be. So you can see here I have run, core frequency, voltage, VRAM frequency, and the number of watts, resulting in FPS, percentage of the GPU used, and how long that usage was at that level, the temperature, the average frequency, and then the max frequency, also known as the boost. Now in this instance, I'm going to run this not as AMD overclocking, but to me, this is what rage mode really should be. These are the numbers that AMD provided in their auto tuning section. This is what they said this GPU should be capable of doing. And to me, a true rage mode, rage mode, would automatically set all of these variables to the highest. And then if there was a problem, it would back off one or two of these variables to give you the best potential overclock for this GPU. But that's not what they did. So now we have to actually test that. So these are the variables we're gonna bring over to the Adrenaline software. Over here in the Adrenaline software, for this part, I would highly recommend that you add a game profile. This will make future tuning a little bit easier. Should anything go wrong, it won't completely trash your global settings. Additionally, I don't think if there is an error that it completely wipes this information like the global tuning profile actually will wipe out if the driver crashes, video car crashes, etc. So this is kind of a safer way in order to do this. Starting here with the fans, we enable, enable advanced controls, and I pop out the fine tuning controls. I drag the zero RPM all the way to the line, and then I slowly increment these guys up. Now the number I want at the highest end is at 80C, I want it to run at 100%. All the other numbers are you know, incrementals. So as it's ramping up, I want it to be somewhat of a smooth line, but it doesn't really matter all that much, the exact curve of that particular line. I just wanna make sure at 80, we're at 100. What you're actually setting here for the temperature range is the junction temperature. So as the junction temperature is at 56 degrees Celsius, it should just barely be running around 23%, or in this case, it's actually zero because it's in a silenter mode, right? So it's, it's fluctuating, it's not really going up too high. Power. Now, what AMD called out in their settings was 270, that is 5.8%. So we're gonna add 6% additional power to the GPU. The GPU itself is going to draw up to 270 watts. It's not gonna be set at 270. It's just gonna have a limit at 270 and it's gonna fluctuate up and down around that number. It's never going to max out and just say, nope, give me 270 and stay there the entire time. That's not how power works. It's going to draw, pull in up to 270 watts. VRAM. So first we need to set the memory timings itself to fast timings. 
This reduces the latency that the card is going to run at. Turn on advanced controls and what AMD's overclock algorithm said was 200, was 2,150. So that's the number we're going to enter in there. Last, certainly not least, GPU tuning, turn on advanced controls, starting here at the bottom, 1150 for the voltage. The maximum frequency was 2564. And then this min frequency here, I have found I do have to increase this. What I'm noticing, and, and I will test this in a future video, but I believe I'm noticing VDroop on certain titles that's actually causing it to crash right at the beginning, right as the GPU is starting to ramp up. This min frequency setting here should actually counter that. And I, I witnessed that directly with Borderlands 3. When this was set to 500, Borderlands 3 would not run with these settings. When I set this to 2450, it would properly run. So that's, that's where I'm getting my information and that's what I saw happen. So once we are all done, once we have all of the AMD settings applied by clicking the apply button, when Hitman 3 is on, this is what the system is going to do. This means we're finally ready, so we're gonna bring up Cap Frame X. Remember, you're gonna look here in the middle, and what you wanna see is Hitman 3. The second you see it, you're gonna hit F12, and that's gonna start the capture process. Over on the 4K, we are ready to start the benchmark. I'm gonna kick that off, and I'm gonna to prepare to hit F12. Now, I will tell you, this particular run will not count. This particular run is going to be hindered by OBS and a couple other things that are being ran at the same time in order to give you this video. So the performance you're going to see here, ignore it because this is not the one that I'm going to actually use to dissect. Okay, so here is our run. You can see I have already trimmed this down using the range slider tool. We're coming in at just under 95 seconds. But look at our average frame per second, 134.7. Okay, so for the real true rage mode, it should be 134.7. Now look at the difference here already. We are 7.7 .7 average FPS higher than the GPU overclock, which was our previous best setting. From stock, we are 9.1 FPS higher. Those are very good numbers, and you can also see a very tight grouping here with the frames, very low stutter, only for 0.26 seconds did we have a stutter. Going over to the sensor statistics, which is also very good information, and this is specifically what you are going to use in order to help tune all of these variables. So our percentage load was 97, our percent in load was 76, temperature 61, wow, look at the temperature difference. 11, 11 degrees Celsius below balanced, 13 degrees Celsius below GPU overclock. That's really good temperature differences. And remember, the temperature here is going to have a direct correlation to the voltage that the GPU is going to pull. The higher the junction temperature, the more current is going to be ne needed in order to actually get to the GPU. The higher your current requirement, the higher your voltage requirement. The higher your voltage, the lower the frequency can possibly be. So all of this is correlated kind of around temperature and how much electricity we can actually drive into that GPU core. Our average frequency was 2379 and the boost was 2431. So across the board with what really should be rage mode, real rage, you can see that we are significantly increasing our overall performance, but what's happening right here? Why are we staying out of load for a long period of time? 24% of the time, the GPU was not maxed. Well, what that tells me is this number right here, 270. Now that's already a 15 watt increase, but if you look around in the forums, if you look around at a lot of people talking in the zeitgeist, they will tell you, these 6,000 cards are artificially capped when it comes to power draw, that power number. So this is the last of these tests that we're going to run, at least using the AMD software. Power plus real rage. We're going to use the same exact numbers right here. 
and we're gonna increase this to 300. Now that is the maximum the Radeon software will allow us to run. We're gonna increase that to 15, apply, and we're gonna run the same exact benchmark and then come right back for the results. Okay, so here's our 300 run. You can see 138.4, percentage in use was 97, load was 76 still, temperature was 60. We actually went down in temperature by giving it more electricity. Isn't that weird? 2406, and our boost reached 2471. Now you might be wondering why I'm not increasing this core frequency number. Well, from what I have seen, our real limiter here is not boost, is not the system trying to get even higher numbers. You can see we're not even coming close. We're about 90 megahertz off. So what's, what's the point of running us that high anyways? I could mess around here with volts. I could decrease the amount of voltage going to the system, but that's also not really going to have a dramatic impact because the system can ignore your setting on that volt area and actually run what it thinks it needs. So the thing that you have the most control over is actually this power. So at this point, we have maxed out. All of the settings that AMD is providing us, we've maxed out. And this is a pretty good difference. Going from stock of 125 to 138. That is 13 frames per second more, almost. So now what do we do? Well, you're a gamer, I bet. And you're probably going for higher scores. And you're probably wanting to get the most performance out of your system. That's why you're watching my channel. In the next three videos, I'm actually going to discuss three separate techniques to try to get just a little bit more performance out of this system solely by adjusting things on the GPU and adjusting certain values that we have access to using some other tools. When those videos post, you can check them out right there.